a food crisis is sweeping across the Sahel. Late erratic rainfall, high food prices, displacement and chronic poverty have pushed more than 19 million people into food insecurity. Severe fodder shortages are leading to early transhumans and changing livestock corridors, causing tensions in communities and at border areas. Civil unrest in some northern areas is increasing the pressure. If the most vulnerable people don't get help now, the situation will deteriorate fast. Emergency support for agriculture and livelihoods is the first vital step towards increasing resilience. And the UN Food and Agriculture Organization is supporting farmers, pastoralists, and agropastoralists across the region. In Chad, an FAO vegetable gardening project is targeting almost 7,000 people, including many female-headed households. Thanks to seeds, tools, and training, they will have a chance to sustain their families beyond the current crisis. The situation this year is much worse than last year. This year, we haven't been able to produce a single kilogram of millet. But luckily, the vegetables we are growing here are keeping us going during the hardest time of year. In Niger, FAO is distributing improved millet seeds in partnership with the NGO Concern. This came just in time. These people really need the seeds. Last year was not good. The harvest failed. And the provision of animal feed and goats will boost the income and food security of thousands of families. In Burkina Faso, FAO is distributing improved millet seeds and nyebe beans. The rainy season increases risk of animal disease, so work is underway to strengthen pastoralists' resilience with animal feed, veterinary drugs and vaccines for the local communities and refugees from Mali. Without the distributions, it will be a catastrophe, terrible, because there will be hunger, suffering, the animals will die, even we could die. Millions are in need of immediate assistance, but it's medium and longer term interventions that can break the cycle of food shortages and crises in the region. Rapid action is the only way to prevent a full-blown food and nutrition crisis. The Beka Valley is the poorest part of Lebanon. Wages are low, prices are high, unemployment is rife. These people have their own problems, but when Syrians from nearby Damascus and Homs began arriving, they shared what little they had. This mosque near Arsal now hosts 33 families in tents. In March, when rockets destroyed our house, Rima fled Homs, crossing the border on foot with her five children. We heard gunshots and bombs exploding. So we started running as fast as we could. I was afraid for the children. A Lebanese family is letting them stay in an uncompleted house. It's a Spartan existence, more of a construction site than a home, but it's safe and they have a roof over their heads. The trauma and fear of their escape and an uprooted life is not easy to forget, especially for children. Eight-year-old Fatima misses her school and her friends back home. Syrians escaping Homs have to cross these hills in the middle of the night, sometimes on foot and carrying only a few belongings. But when they get here to Lebanon, there's not much they can do because the economy here is suffering as well. So the World Food Program has a plan to help everybody. With only the clothes on their backs, 
Fatima and her four children escaped from Homs in February. Today, a volunteer gives her a lift to go shopping. Every month, she receives a voucher from WFP, allowing her to buy food in local shops. It's an innovative system, especially designed for situations like these, where food is available in markets, but too expensive. It also allows them to buy a variety of food, like fresh produce, meat, eggs, and milk. In Lebanon, almost 30,000 refugees will receive vouchers in July, turning what could be a burden into a boost for the local economy. WFP is preparing to help 850,000 in Syria itself and up to 120,000 refugees outside. As Lebanon struggles to avoid being pulled into the violence in Syria, a family meal may not seem like much. But in this troubled region, a little comfort and stability goes a long way. This is the northeast of Brazil. It's a vast, semi-arid area, and the low erratic rainfall here makes it difficult to earn a living from the land. In fact, this area has the highest concentration of rural poverty in all of Latin America. For years, Ulysses dos Santos and his family struggled to grow anything outside their house. Irregular rainfall was not their only challenge. The soil here was also far too toxic. The cause? 1,000 liters of grey water ran outside every day. The water from the sewage, basin and shower was all thrown outside. We had open-air sewage with lots of flies. More than one million families in this area have a similar problem. Ulysses agreed to test out a new filtering system that could potentially change all of their lives. Now the family's grey water is piped into this biowater system. Here it runs through a filter. The filtered water is then clean enough to use for irrigation. The system was designed by Luis Montero Neto from the Dom Hilda Camara project, supported by IFAD, the UN agency that works to alleviate poverty. He adapted the design from larger industrial models. It's not complex. It just needs a few elements of proportion in its installation, especially for the filter which consists of pebbles, grit, wood shavings, and humus with earthworms. And this filtering system has been a great success. After the one-year trial period, the Dos Santos family now has a very productive vegetable garden, and the produce has been tested to make sure it is free of toxins. The water that was jeopardizing our health before is now improving our health, as we are producing good quality food with it. Having access to fresh vegetables has also changed the family's diet. We didn't have these vegetables before. We used to eat mainly beans and rice and meat. But now we've added these vegetables and they're more healthy. They have more vitamins, more protein. We can see the results from this. Not only is Ulysses eating better, but he also has more money. Not long ago, this 28-year-old planned to migrate to the city to find a job. But now he has surplus food to sell, and he has no intention of leaving. This is exactly the result that the project team hoped for. Young people have been wanting to leave the rural areas in search of work, but when an opportunity like this arrives in their community, they don't need to leave. We are working together with the farmers to show that it's possible to live well and live with dignity in the countryside. And now that the Dos Santos family are living well, and the biowater trial has been so successful, the project staff hope to get government support to install these biowater systems in one million homes across the region.